Hello everyone, welcome to another session here on Physio TV. Uh, I am Dr. Rucha Rayas. Uh, I'm assistant professor here uh, in cardiovascular and respiratory physiotherapy department at Sanjeeti Institute College of Physiotherapy, Pune. And uh, I'm very happy to in, uh, welcome you all today for today's session. Uh, in this day and age, several people suffer from heart disease. Or even if we don't, we know someone or the other, either from friends or family who are suffering from the same. And there are several misconceptions about dietary habits which need to be followed by people with heart disease. So to help clarify some of these, uh, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, Ms. Nidhi Mehta. Um, Ms. Nidhi Mehta is, practicing, is a practicing nutritionist and consultant dietitian since the past 20 years. She is the founder of Food Cure and has worked for various health clinics, industries and hospitals such as KM Hospital, Nestle India, Aloha Clinics, VLCC Institute, etc. Uh, she conducts workshops and has written several articles on uh, awareness on good nutrition habits. And also in the COVID situation, ma'am has worked towards uh, working on uh, nourishment in COVID. So I am very happy to introduce uh, ma'am today and she will be sharing with us uh, about heart healthy diet habits. So I request ma'am to kindly begin with the talk for today. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start away with a very controversial and very, very important topic right away. Uh, many of my patients come to me and uh, tell me if they have cholesterol or if they have heart issues, they'll come and directly say that uh, all fats are bad. I should not be eating fat. I will go zero on a zero fat diet and so on. Uh, however, uh, I heard Dr. Firodia also. And um, the fact is that there are good fats and then there are bad fats. So we have to definitely avoid bad fats. And, but we also have to include good quality fats because they have certain functions to perform in our body as well, which will also help in uh, maintaining better uh, status of the heart issues. So uh, let me just talk a little bit about the bad fats. What they do is they increase plaque formation and they also increase the bad cholesterol, which is the LDL cholesterol. Now, where do we get these bad fats from? And uh, we definitely have to avoid these. Uh, the so-called saturated fats, especially the hydrogenated fats or the vegetable oils that are labeled on the foods, the shortenings, the dalda variety of fats is something that we definitely have to avoid. And we also very easily find it hidden in bakery products, uh, in the roadside foods that are fried, refried and fried again and again, and you get that rancid smell. These are the kind of fats that we definitely have to avoid. Now, what are the kind of fats that we have to be a little more mindful and include them in the diet? They are the good fats because what they do is they help us reduce the plaque formation. They help us increase the HDL or the good cholesterol. And they also help in maintaining hormonal balance. And hormonal balance is equally uh, important in maintaining the, um, arthro avoiding atherosclerosis, reducing plaque formation. Uh, we also heard that diabetes is uh, correlated to heart issues and metabolic disorders, lipid metabolism. And hence, hormone uh, balance is very, very important. Uh, so what are the good quality fats that we have to include? Uh, you must have heard about PUFA, MUFA, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fats, and also omega-3. Omega-3 does play a very important role in increasing the HDL cholesterol along with exercise. Uh, no exercise and only omega-3 will not really help much. Um, Omega-3 is very easily available through fish and fish oils, also walnuts and flax seeds amongst other foods. Uh, also, you have to be more mind mindful. PUFA is very easily available through um, vegetable oils, uh, which we normally use for cooking. Uh, however, we have to uh, take care that we have to avoid using refined oils and we have to increase or uh, use filtered or cold pressed oils. 
Uh, why? Because refined oils, uh, what happens is in the refination process, all the polyphenols and the vitamins get destroyed, uh, which are very, very important for the metabolism of fat in the body. And hence, we should uh, use filtered or cold pressed oils for our routine daily cooking. Uh, limit fat use to three to four teaspoons for a normal person. Uh, and what kind of oils to use? We can use uh, till oil, groundnut oil, mustard oil. The traditional oils that we've been using are uh, very good for normal metabolism. So that is fats. Uh, the next controversial topic is sugars. Um, so like we know, how diabetes management or blood sugar management is also very, very important because uh, if our blood sugar levels increase, then what our body does is takes up that sugar and converts it to fat and stores it in the body. And that is the reason why we have to control the intake of sugar as well. Uh, now here, refined sugars, definitely the white variety of sugar is something that you have to reduce. Uh, sugar, you must have heard, is also addictive. So the more sugar you have, the more um, craving for sugar you develop. So we have to avoid, uh, we also have to avoid hidden sugars. Recently, I was uh, calculating a child's diet and what I saw is uh, the hidden sugars in a child diet, child's diet can go up to say seven to 10 spoons in a day. And our daily um, RDA or the dietary allowance that is recommended cannot go more than four to te five teaspoons in a day. Now, where do we these hidden sugars come from? And we definitely have, have to avoid these. Uh, these come very easily from the biscuits, the breads, the ketchups, the sauces, uh, which we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So definitely avoid these kind of processed foods. The processed foods will also have add a little more salt and a little more sugar to tingle those taste buds and make you want to go and pick some more extra wafers or biscuits. So we have to avoid these. Um, if we uh, finally, but we all um, like to have sweets once in a while for celebrate, uh, celebratory reasons. For these reasons, I would uh, recommend um, everyone to make sweets at home because here you can control the quantity of sugar and you can also control the quality of sweetness that goes in. So definitely we can add jaggery instead of white sugar or refined sugar. We can also add um, natural sweeteners like dates, like figs, like raisins, honey, etc., to sweeten uh, any food item that you would like to have. Uh, besides that, I would also bring um, uh, into uh, mention the labels that we uh, that are there on um, food products. Uh, many a times sugars are present, but they will not mention sugar. So you have to read through the labels to prevent avoid uh, to avoid eating these kind of sugars, especially high fructose corn syrup, uh, invert syrup, dextrose, etc. Nothing but different forms of sugars which we need to avoid to prevent heart issues. Um, these days also uh, very easily available in the market is a natural sweetener with no side effects, which is called stevia. Stevia is nothing but uh, a leaf. If it is available in dried form or powdered form, it is a very convenient sweetener to use for everybody. Uh, however, there are also uh, easily uh, available stevia related products which have artificial sweeteners added to it. So that is also something that you need to keep in mind while uh, consuming sweeteners. Uh, the next uh, tip or topic I would like to discuss is uh, the fruits and vegetables. Uh, WHO and all uh, good dietitians and nutritionists will recommend uh, incorporating five different types of fruits and vegetables in your daily diet. Uh, sometimes we do feel that five is a lot, but no, it is easily manageable. You can have one or two for breakfast, about two cups of uh, vegetable in the form of vegetable or salad or raita for lunch and similar for dinner. 
you can also go for mid meal uh, snacks. You can replace mid meal snacks with fruits. Uh, which are very comfortable. Some fruits are very comfortable to carry around like bananas and um, apple. You can have them wherever you want. So definitely try and include five fruits and vegetables. Uh, these not only provide fiber, which is very, very important for our digestive system, but they also, uh, there have been multiple studies which have proved that including good four to five uh, servings of fruits and vegetables in our routine diet will reduce uh, blood pressure or hypertension, will reduce cholesterol formation, will reduce blood sugar levels, will reduce the chances and risk of cancer. It will also reduce inflammation, which is the major cause of uh, all these metabolic disorders. And it will also help in reducing plaque formation. So definitely include, uh, tell all your patients uh, or anybody having heart uh, diseases or prone to any such metabolic disorders to include four to five servings of fruits and vegetables. Uh, next is whole grains. Uh, now in India, we are blessed with having lots of varieties of whole grains. However, uh, lately we have started using or depending just on wheat and rice. Um, so now we've uh, started spreading more awareness about different kind of whole grains that are very easily available like ragi, like bajra, like jawar, uh, also like um, uh, bhagar or samai millet, proso millet, kodo millet. There are uh, multiple of varieties of these millets very easily available. Even kuttu, which is available in the north, it is called buckwheat in English. Uh, the benefit of having all these um, millets and whole grains, a variety of them in the diet is, uh, one is they provide more fiber, so there, plus uh, they are a very, very good sources of micronutrients. So micronutrients like iron, calcium, magnesium, we all know the importance of these nutrients in heart diseases. They definitely help reduce plaque formation. They definitely help maintain a healthy heart. Uh, but there are also other smaller micronutrients like manganese. With manganese especially is very important. It is a part of the, the insulin formation. Uh, selenium and zinc which are very important in forming the coenzymes related to antioxidant activity. So definitely all these micronutrients are important for heart and better health. So try and include as many different varieties of grains and whole grains at that. Uh, definitely avoid polished rice, polished wheat or refined wheat, which is nothing but maida. We have to avoid that to uh, help our heart. Uh, so next is choose wisely. Um, many a times I've seen just because it's a party, we, we go and celebrate it with junk food. Uh, but what we want to celebrate and what we want to eat, I, I tell my patients, your health is in your hands. Uh, literally the food that you eat is going to determine the quality of life that you're going to have a few years down the line. And hence you should choose wisely. Uh, you can also celebrate with a cup of fruits um, and uh, definitely avoid junk food for better health. Include more variety in your diet. Uh, now, it's not only applies to the grains and millets that we've already discussed, but it also applies to all other food groups. So the more variety of fruits and vegetables, the better. Uh, in fact, uh, WHO has also recommended that we should include a, a rainbow of colors in our diet. Uh, and India, again, we are blessed with uh, different multiple uh, regional fruits, locally available fruits and vegetables. Uh, so we have to avoid, uh, we have to include as many varieties of fruits and vegetables as we can. We have to include as many variety of pulses and dals that we can and not just limit to one particular type of dal every single day. Uh, definitely try and include different types of milk and meat products if you are eating them. Uh, different types of rotis are also possible to be included in the diet. Avoid white rice, 
try to include um, unpolished rice, which is now very easily available in local markets. Uh, so these are the varieties of fruits and vegetables and besides other food groups that we should be including for our better heart health. Uh, next, I would like to discuss a little bit uh, the hunger scale. Uh, it is, I think, uh, everybody knows that in this generation, uh, we have, we do have uh, a little bit of more access to food. Um, the restaurant industry is booming um, in the, it was definitely booming in the pre-COVID times, but even now it is so easily available. Um, it is so easy to just order food on our fingertips. It's so easy to just go and grab a bite of chocolate. Um, even socializing has changed. Um, we now prefer meeting friends, not in a park, but we prefer meeting friends at a local cafe where we can order sugar loaded um, drinks and sweets. Uh, so we do overeat many a times and overeating is a problem. It could lead to obesity. It could lead to other lifestyle diseases. Uh, so here, whenever you want to eat, you have to keep this hunger scale in mind. Uh, definitely, I, I suggest people not to go under three or not to go above six. So definitely not go to a level when you're extremely hungry. Uh, because what happens is when you are extremely hungry, you tend to eat more than you require. Also, never overeat. However good or tempting that food is, how much ever people force you, whatever you are overeating is finally going to create problems for your body. So definitely uh, eat only when you are hungry and eat only as much as you are hungry to prevent uh, lifestyle problems. Um, the next uh, mineral or uh, nutrient that I would like to talk about is protein. Uh, now, many a times uh, this, this uh, nutrient is either value overvalued or many a times it is completely ignored. Uh, what happens is in India, um, even the non-vegetarians, uh, protein deficiency is very, very common because we don't give importance to protein-rich foods. Now, what are protein-rich foods? Uh, they're very easily available. Uh, milk and milk products, uh, nuts, seeds, pulses, dals. Uh, and if you're eating non-veg, then egg, meat, fish, they're all good sources of proteins. And you can definitely include three to four uh, servings of proteins in your diet. If you do that much, what happens is um, these proteins help in increasing your satiety uh, level. So by satiety level, I mean, uh, if you have observed, if you're just eating uh, tea and uh, bread or toast for breakfast, which is a very common breakfast, um, you feel hungry by, uh, in, you know, in, in about two hours because it is a carbohydrate loaded breakfast. It is not um, rich in protein and other uh, nutrients. Um, vice versa, if you're having an egg, for example, or if you're just having half a cup of uh, chana, then uh, it, it makes you feel fuller for a longer time and you would not go and grab that junk food, which is so easily available. So definitely include three to four servings of proteins in um, a normal person's diet. I would say normal because people who have certain issues, we need to control the protein levels. Uh, what this protein also does is um, it helps maintain the hormone level again. All hormones, all enzymes are nothing but proteins. They are building blocks of amino acids. And uh, it, with mild protein uh, deficiency also, I have observed um, hormonal imbalances happening. So with good proteins in the diet, um, hormones are better controlled and hence uh, plaque formation reduces. Uh, we should also uh, look at it from strength point of view. Proteins are very important for muscle building and strength building. And if a person is having that much strength, then the person is also able to exercise better, which is equally important for heart health. So uh, the proteins have to be included in a uh, regular basis. 
uh, another nutrient that I would like to uh, focus a little more uh, is vitamin C. Now, vitamin C or ascorbic acid is, um, is an antioxidant by itself. And it has a high antioxidant level in the body. Um, it is very, very easily available with plain, simple nimbu or orange. Uh, we all know that amla is a very good source of vitamin C. So maybe just a teaspoon of amla powder itself is uh, very, very uh, helpful in increasing the vitamin C levels and the antioxidant levels in the body. Uh, also a lesser known um, a fruit that is very, very rich in vitamin C and very easily available is guava or peru. Uh, it is very comfortable to just pick a peru and eat it. It is uh, almost, the vitamin C level of guava is almost equivalent to amla. Uh, now what vitamin C does is the antioxidant level helps the apolipoprotein A activity and uh, therefore reduces plaque formation. It also reduces inflammation because of its collagen building property. Uh, and hence, we definitely have to include vitamin C. Uh, now, the normal RDA or recommended allowance for vitamin C is 40 to 100 uh, milligrams. Uh, however, for heart, we can go up to 3 grams or 3000 milligrams of vitamin C in a day. Uh, and uh, vitamin C toxicity is never a question because uh, any excess amount of vitamin C is excreted from the body. So we definitely have to include uh, vitamin C. Now, um, I have mentioned uh, quite a bit about nutrition and uh, uh, what nutrients to be added and what to be avoided. Um, I would uh, say that uh, with exercise and paying a little attention to what you are eating, uh, it, is, it is very, very helpful in preventing all kind of metabolic disorders, especially heart disorder. And we can definitely avoid having high cholesterol and uh, atherosclerosis or other heart diseases. So pay a little attention to your diet and what you're eating. Uh, to have a healthy life. Thank you. Rucha, over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for the very informative talk today. And uh, I am sure our viewers have uh, had their doubts clarified. And now they will definitely be able to practice heart-healthy uh, dietary habits, not only just for themselves and also for friends and family together. So thank you once again and um, hope to collaborate with you uh, in the future for similar such ventures. I would also like to thank the team of Physio TV for giving us this platform today and helping spread the word about uh, healthy nutrition habits. And this is me, Dr. Rucha Raya signing off. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay happy, stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you.